The Sixth Grade Nickname Game by Gordon Corman, read with permission from Scholastic by Mrs. Leader. Today's reading is Chapter 8. Marathon. Mr. Doncaster was washing his hands in the downstairs boys' bathroom when Mr. Richards entered. The principal cast the deer in headlights look at the wire fishnet the third grade teacher held in his hand. In the mesh lay an unmoving gray form. My algae eater, the teacher explained mournfully. He died of complications from when Mr. Hughes rained half my ceiling into the fish tank. I'm giving him a burial at sea. He stepped into the corner stall and emerged a moment later with an empty net. The principal dried his hands with the paper towel. Well, I can't help your fish, but it might cheer you up to know our problems with Mr. Hughes are nearly over. Mr. Richards raised an eyebrow. Really? Mr. Doncaster nodded. He'll be back on the football field by Christmas. The superintendent was so appalled by 6B's practice test that he gave me the go-ahead to start interviewing new teachers. Let me tell you who I'm thinking of. The two men walked out together. A moment later, a round face peered round face peered out from the center stall. It was Charles Rossi, alias Snoopy. The students of 6B were settling into their seats when Charles came charging through the door. Purple and breathless, he ran up to Wiley and Jeff. Go away, Snoopy, said Wiley, shuffling notebooks. The bet's off. Frantically, Charles flapped his arms and moved his lips, but no sound came out. Forget it, Jeff advised. We know what you're trying to say, and the answer is no. Finally, Charles managed to look to suck up enough air to rasp. Mr. Huge is getting fired. Silence fell over the room like a drape on a birdcage. How could you know that, demanded Jeff, but no reply was needed. The CIA didn't gather information as efficiently as Charles Rossi. It's not fair, wailed Cassandra. The other teachers don't understand how great he is. They just see that he's big and loud and different, that he doesn't fit in. It must be tough to fit in when you're Mr. Huge, mused Jeff, except to fit in, you know, an aircraft hangar. Or a football team, added Raymond. Maybe he asked to go back to the high school. Wait a second. All at once, Wiley remembered Donald's team picture. Indy told me Mr. Hughes quit the football team. If he gets fired from oops, he's out of a job. We've got to save Mr. Hughes, Cassandra gasped. How, countered Gordon. Deer in headlights is the principal. It's not up to us. Jeff's brow furrowed. Well, maybe... Well, what did Mr. Hughes do to get in so much trouble? Peter stared at him. What didn't he do? Yell the school down? Sweat up the world? Yeah, but there's got to be one thing that put us over the put it over the top, Wiley interrupted. Snoopy, did deer in headlights give any reason why they're getting rid of Mr. Huge? Charles thought back. He said something about how bad we all did on that practice reading test. Aha! Cassandra was triumphant. The real test isn't for three weeks. If we all do awesome, I'll bet Mr. Huge can stay. Aren't you forgetting something, Peter cut in? We didn't flub that test because of bad weather, you know. We're lousy at English. Maybe, he paused thoughtfully. Maybe we really are the dim bulbs. Yeah, right, chuckled Wiley. No one else laughed. Jeff looked around in concern. Hey, guys, wait. You don't really believe. His voice trailed off. The students of 6B stood in embarrassed silence, their heads hanging. Wiley and Jeff shared a guilty glance. Bright lights and dim bulbs had gone had come from them. Were the nicknames backfiring? Cassandra's normally fair cheeks flamed red. This has gone on long enough, she cried. It's okay to have a nickname for fun, but you can't let it, let it tell you who you are. If I put broccoli in a jar and stick it on a label that says M&M's, does that make it candy? Is that a question on the reading test? Peter asked suspiciously. We are not dim, Cassandra said through clenched teeth. We're going to study our brains out and ace that state reading assessment. We don't have anything to study, Jeff pointed out. No practice questions, no shortcut hints, no nothing. We've got everything we need, Cassandra insisted. They just stared at her. It's obvious, she persisted. It's a reading test. She pointed to the shelves at the back of the room. We've got books in the class, books at home. There are zillions in the media center, zillions more in the public library. How do you get ready for a reading test? By reading. Reading, chorused half a dozen voices. 
think, ordered Cassandra. If you play basketball and you want to be a better foul shooter, what do you do? You tra take, take free throws over and over and over. Well, that's how you get better at reading, by doing it. You mean like extra reading, asked Raymond. I don't know any books, complained Christy. There was general agreement. Wiley snapped his fingers. Mrs. Chang, she knows every book on the planet. There was an uneasy murmur. Finally, Stan piped up. Do sports books count? Totally, Cassandra crowed. All books count. You can read the ingredients off a cereal box as long as you read. And you don't have to answer questions or do book reports. It's just reading, period. I've had a lot of teachers, Peter said thoughtfully, but Mr. Hughes is the only one who can push a bus. I never got excited about school until I saw him in action, put in Dinky. He's so psyched that you can't help getting caught up in it, too. He always sticks up for us, added Stan. I guess it's time to return the favor. I'm in, sighed, Sal sighed Kelly. I read a book once, mused Raymond. It wasn't so bad. One by one, the students of 6B pledged themselves to a reading marathon for the sake of their teacher. One last thing, Cassandra added. We can't tell Mr. Huge. Good idea, Wiley nodded fervently. That guy would sweat up the North Pole. If he knew his job was on the line, he might drown us all. When Mr. Hughes entered the classroom at 9 o'clock, he found no laughing conversations, no baseball cards, no spitball wars. In fact, there were no sounds at all. Instead, the big teacher was greeted by the sight of 25 tops of heads. 25 noses were buried in 25 books. Good morning, men. Nobody looked up. Those must be MVP books. Hmm. Came a few absent murmurs. Most of the class ignored him. Mr. Hughes popped his whistle into his mouth and blew his, an ear-splitting blast. The students of 6B were lifted three inches off their seats. By the time they came back to Earth, he had everyone's attention. But it happened again. As soon as Wiley finished his fractions worksheet, out came his copy of The Great Brain. Now Jeff was reading, too, and Cassandra. As soon as the students completed their work, the books reappeared. Mr. Hughes was bewildered. Since when had 6B, when was 6B such a bunch of bookworms? Peter went to the washroom. When he came back, he had obviously made a side trip to the library. His arms were laden with novels. It means they were full. Hold it, the big teacher stopped him at the door. What are you doing? What are you, the bookmobile? Oh, ha ha, Peter gurgled. I thought I'd sign out a few extras. You know, just in case the books we have are too boring or something. This is a little bit sudden, observed Mr. Hughes. Why all this reading? It's fun, Cassandra was supplied. I agree, said Mr. Hughes, but it was fun yesterday, too, when nobody was doing it. The bell rang for recess. In the teacher's room, Mr. Hughes was too confused to take more than a sip from his Gatorade. What was going on with his class? Were they pulling some kind of quarterback sneak on him? He gazed out the window. In the schoolyard, the usual games of softball, jump rope, and tag were in full swing, but not a single 6B student was playing. They were all draped in various poses against the buildings and along the fence, reading. Mrs. Chang sat down beside him at the window. I've got to hand it to you, Ted. Your new novel study certainly has the kids enthralled. Mr. Hughes looked blank. What new novel study? That's why I was late getting down here, the librarian explained. A dozen of them showed up looking for books. They're cleaning me out. We're not doing a novel study, Mr. Hughes said honestly. It just sort of happened. All of a sudden, the whole class went book crazy. I mean, yesterday I assigned a paragraph and they acted like I was asking them to kick a hundred yard field goal. And today, he gestured toward the windows, I don't know what to do. Mrs. Chang laughed. Do? Get down on your knees and give thanks. If there's one thing this that never happens enough, it's reading just for the plain fun of it. Do nothing, just enjoy it. And that is the end of chapter eight. The next chapter nine is the rollerblading lesson. I am loving the fact, as a librarian, that the kids are reading for fun and enjoying it. So that is great. We do have the great brain in the library, by the way. And you can get it at the public library as well. So read a great book. Until next time, thanks for listening to the 6th grade nickname game.